Hello everyone and welcome to IA Simplified. So IA Simplified is a podcast series where we meet industry leaders to gain their perspective on the impact of intelligent automation on SME and mid-market financial services, healthcare and other related fields. I'm your host, um, Talani Jayatikolo. And today, I'm on this episode, I'm joined by Rajesh um, Nair from Automator. Rajesh is the co-founder and CEO of Automator. Uh, Rajesh is a very interesting guy. Anyone that's, <laughs> that's seen Rajesh or has heard from Rajesh, he talks a lot from experience. Um, but today, I brought Rajesh on to discuss something very important. And that topic is the great resignation. And the bridge and bridging the gap, the intelligent automation gap um, for SMEs and mid markets. Rajesh, I'm happy to have you here. Welcome to IA Simplified. Thank you. Thank you, Tulani. Thanks for the opportunity and thanks for having me here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thank you. Actually, you said you said a few things already. So I'm the co founder and CEO of Automator. Um, I have been in the automation space for a little over a decade. Um, I've worked with some of a, a couple of people who who are now pioneers and thought leaders uh, in the automation space. Um, personally, uh, I I can call myself an evangelist uh, who thought of automation in the organization that I worked for previously. Um, I've been a customer of automation. Uh, I've been a seller of automation, where be it licenses, people, solutions, uh, you know, managed services. Um, I've been a manager of people in the automation space. Uh, yeah, so I've I've kind of worn all hats. Um, and yes, my background is uh, has been uh, in the outsourcing business, which is where a lot of um, the knowledge that I've gained around processes uh, helps me uh, has helped me in the past. Uh, and continues to help me in kind of coming up with solutions and thoughts and ideas on how we can help organizations around the world. So, yeah, that's me. Yeah. I, I like that, you know, the warrior with the battery mats. Um, that's how I like to look at Rajesh um, most times. Um, so I think there's, there's something very interesting about what you do, Automator. Um, I've seen it, we've seen it work in the past, um, but in a different context. Uh, we've seen Fiverr, we've seen Upwork, we've seen, you know, this digital marketplace um, where people can actually buy and sell digital services, not just, you know, um, not just any kind of product, but digital services. And that is something, it's something quite similar what you, is what you do uh, at Automator, but you're using, you know, automation as a marketplace. And um, you're buying and you know, you're getting people, different people as well, um, from different walks of life and connected. You know, what has really inspired you to build this platform that's a lovely question and i love to answer that question um so yeah i've been uh, like i said earlier i've been in the automation space for a while um i've been i've played all roles uh, that anyone would, would play I, I should say i've been i'm privileged to have got the opportunity to play all those roles and with all the knowledge that i've uh, gained over the years um and uh, uh, the the whole great re- resignation story, right? Uh, that's happening around the world. I think I'm one of the first. Uh, I I could say that I am a result of the great resignation. Uh, so so until last year, uh, this time last year, uh, I've been playing around in my head around what do I want to do, where do I want to be, uh, you know, what can I do more in the automation space because I've been doing it for a while, um, and that's where the thought came in as to how can I. Uh, can I become? Can I start another uh, system integration business, or, or build a product, um, or, or you know, uh, one of those two? Uh, those two things was a, was an option, and I said that may not be different, and it doesn't necessarily help everyone. Um, so, so I thought if I can combine all these things together, how about um, creating something that actually supports everyone, um, uh, and therefore you 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 end up creating an ecosystem that can help. Uh, all stakeholders right so that's where the idea of automator uh, came into being where i said uh, let's not be hung uh, stuck to a geography let's not be stuck to a particular product or a, or a particular kind of service or solution how about be all things to everyone 
uh, be a lead generator for a system integrator, be a solution provider to a customer, be a, uh, a knowledge provider and an opportunity provider to individuals uh, who, who like who love to start their own business or be solopreneurs in the automation business. Um, yeah, and that's that's where the whole thought came in, and I said, let's do this, uh, and that way uh, we could work with everyone uh, rather than trying to uh, compete against everyone. So that was the idea of Automator. And this sort of brings me to my next question, because you've mentioned the great resignation, um, the great resignation, the great reshuffle, the great reset. There's probably 200 or hundreds of names um, about this, you know, the great resignation. And, and I know it's continued. You know, we've started seeing that for a while now. Uh, it's not it's not new. Right. And, you know, with pre-COVID, uh, we're done. With, we're, we're nearly done with COVID. Right. And this is post-COVID and it still continues on. Um, and the companies are struggling to retain talent. You know, talent, you know, talent is is a big thing. You know, companies are struggling to retain talent. Um, they are um, struggling to even hire talent. You know, how is Automator solving this challenge for them? I think before I answer how Automator uh, is helping uh fill the gap i think i think we should we should spend a couple of minutes talking about uh, the struggle to retain talent right why do we struggle to retain talent um it's that's the big question that everyone needs to answer and i think if you can find an answer to that uh, a lot of the challenges that organizations are fa- uh, uh, are facing today um could be nullified so um so retaining talent is an important thing where are we giving our people the opportunity to learn more, uh, to expand their horizons more? Uh, and there are only two types of growth, right? There's horizontal growth for an individual or a vertical growth for an individual. Understanding uh, what what drives those people in our organization today is, is what will help us uh, figure out what do we need to do to make sure we retain that talent. Um, the other, I, I, I watched an interesting TED TEDx video this morning um, where uh, this person was talking, I can't remember the exact uh, title of the uh, uh, of the, of the TED talk um, but this was, she spoke about um, native analogs and native digitals uh, which is another realization that we need to have and what she meant by that was uh, anyone and everyone in the, around the world who's less than 30 years of age is, is categorized as native digital and the way to work with them and, and the way they've grown up, I think we need to understand that and try and align our analog thoughts. For example, I belong to the analog category uh, because I'm more than 30 years old. Um, so how can we bring that together and how do we how do we align and meet somewhere in the middle so that we can, we can cater to their demand of what career, life, uh, work-life balance, etc. mean to them? Uh, versus how we've seen it and how we've grown. So I think that's one aspect uh, to look at as well. So retaining talent, I think, uh, if we if we start thinking about the people who we have, or what what drives them, um, and work with uh, that opportunity and try and change the way we do things with them, uh, will help a lot, uh, or will go a long way in retaining talent. Um, that's one. Uh, in terms of what automator is doing to uh, to fill the gap or to hire talent, one of the main things like uh, the the idea of automator was uh, the fact that uh, we know that there is a challenge um, in terms of having uh, enough people and enough skilled people um, in the automation space, or for that matter, since COVID, the demand for automation and all things automation or you want to call it digitization or transformation, transition from what you are as an organization to what you want to be. Um, uh, the the demand for digitization, digital, etc. All of these has exponentially grown uh, over the last couple of years. So I, I keep giving this example. If there were a hundred companies uh, doing automation before uh, 2020, um, today there are 10,000 that are trying to do that. But the number of people who have that skill with that level of experience are were only that many. You cannot; it's not a factory. We don't. There's nowhere, nowhere in the world is there a factory that's churning out thousand people every day like the universities of the world, right? Uh, they're, they're not churning out uh, work ready graduates in the automation space, so to speak, uh, every single day. So, while the demand has increased, the supply of experienced people 
uh, is limited because there are only that many people. Uh, so how do you fill that gap? The only way to fill that gap is to be able to use people and, and just uh, not move away, but be a bit more flexible in how we hire, who we hire, and for what period of time we hire. What are our hiring needs? Do we need people for a full year? Do we need people on permanent roles? Uh, if we start answering those questions, you will realize that uh, we can do, uh, we can fulfill our demand for labor, for skilled labor, by using this talent that wants to go out there and do things on their own, um, and they want to, uh, they want to um, kind of expand their horizons as well. So, so how Automator is helping today is we are providing, uh, we've tapped into uh, a market, a pool. Uh, at this point in time, as we speak, we are a little over 500 uh, listed freelancers on our platform, and that number keeps increasing every day by by five to ten people um, on a daily basis. Uh, these people have full time jobs elsewhere, or they are they are professional freelancers. They are ready to offer two to four hours a day uh, to any organization or or individual wanting to hire them or needing their services, uh, and that's what some of our customers are already doing. Um, and that's how we're filling the, the helping organizations fill the gap. The two things that you talked about that I really want to touch on, right? One, you talked about skill set. And the next thing you talked about, sort of the future of work. So if we start from you know, the future of work and you know, work our way backwards um, towards you know, skill set, um, I think that would help us solve some of the issues I'm currently seeing in the SME and mid-market. So talking about the future of work, um, you know, we've seen the future of work now. I think it's it's different. The future of work supports hybrid. Now, the future of work supports remote working. The future of work, you know, it's it's enormous now because you're talking about also, te- you know, talent mobility. You're talking about flexibility. And why is it very important for SMEs and mid-market to really tap into this new future of work? Great question. So, um, I think... I think given since COVID, right, the world has changed. That's There's no doubt about it. Um, so if you look at an SME, and if I had the choice, right, um, or for that matter, look at Automator uh, as an organization. We we would like to call ourselves an SME at the moment, um, although we're growing, but we're still small, uh, nowhere close to some of the big ones uh, in the world or even the medium-sized uh, businesses in the automation space. So how are we doing things, right? Um, we are tapping into talent on a need basis, whether it's HR, payroll, uh, you know, web things to be done on our website, uh, backend activities, and so on. So we are leveraging them to help us continue to build our uh, uh, build our product, build our brand, uh, build our market, including sales folks as well. So that's how we are utilizing people and for their skills for a temporary time period, period of time. Uh, and I think that's where. Uh, SMEs also need to start looking, given the fact that um, you don't have enough people who were in the cities, who had migrated into the cities, have moved out to where they belong, to where they came from. Um, So no longer are central business districts uh, the places to be. Um, And therefore, there's this, the, when we say skill shortage, um, the, 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 People have literally spread out, and like I said, uh, there's exponential demand. So if you if you think of it from an SME perspective, a small or medium business perspective, uh, maybe they have to start thinking of changing their strategy around how are they hiring, who they are hiring, and for what purpose they are hiring. Uh, there are enough. Uh, also, uh, the other fact is there are a lot of people who don't have enough experience. But the one thing I believe in is. Uh, we need to start giving people opportunities and we need to start putting in the hard work ourselves in in grooming talent. I think one of the biggest challenges we have today is everybody wants experienced people, but there are only that many experienced people, like I said earlier. So you have to you have to put in the hard work to bring someone in who has enough knowledge to work, but if you can groom them, they could become the next level within the next one year, within the next six months, if you if you can, right? So, uh, and and that will bring me to the whole citizen developer conversation as well a little later, uh, which I'd like to talk about. So, um, you know, I think I think SMEs have to have to kind of 
change the traditional way of uh, of getting people in or of course they continue to do they should continue to do business the way they do but in terms of how you getting in people who can help your business and work for your business that needs a serious rethink and that's the best way to go at this point in time until uh, we see how the world continues to evolve uh, post covid this brings me to my next question just around you know citizen development you know we've seen we're seeing the trend uh, and the trend is going upwards especially in the large organizations organizations like large organizations are beginning to embrace it um as their future of work you know evolves and um i'm particularly interested in you know citizen development in the context of smes and um the mid market you know you're talking about because between the SMEs and the mid market, they probably make about maybe 10, 10 million to about 50 million um, a year in terms of you know revenue. Um, but how do we do? You, do we anticipate you know this same haunt for citizen development in this in this same space like SMEs and mid market? Uh, because just before you answer, I want you, I know I want I want to. Um, touch on something that Gartner said, right? Because Gartner has a prediction by 2023. Again, I don't know how sure this is because this is 2023, it's next year. You know, Gartner said, you know, by 2023, um, the active citizen developers in large organizations is going to be four times, you know, professional um, developers. You know, how 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 are you know, the SMEs and mid-markets coping with this? Are they going to be on the same aunt for citizen developers as the future of work evolves? Okay, the first thing is, according to me, what is a citizen developer? Who is a citizen developer, right? So let me define my understanding of a citizen developer and how I have seen it. So to me, a citizen developer in the automation space or the RPA space, IDP, RPA, you know, the whole umbrella of automation, a citizen developer is a person who has no coding skills, but they understand the process. They are experts in what they do day to day those people have to uh, get into uh, building automations or automating processes that are rule-based in nature that they are sick of doing every single day uh, and they want to get out of that monotony, right? So to me, those are the people who are citizen developers. So that's that's setting the stage on, on and therefore what I'm going to say now. So, <clears throat> so if you think of a if if you were to put this into practicality, right? Uh, I am a person who who does some back office tasks in my office. I work for an employer, and every day I do the same thing. I I can become a set. I am uh, I am motivated. I am driven. So I go up to my boss or my manager and say, "Hey, I found something, and I know that I can automate this using this particular tool." And assuming that organization does not use any automation. So I am the evangelist and therefore I go and talk about it and, and my manager says, wow, Rajesh, that's a great idea. Let's do something. Can you show me how it works? And then I'll, I'll try and build something which is very straightforward, simple, nothing complicated. And therefore it becomes an automated process. Everybody has the aha moment uh, and then Bob's your uncle, right? And then the next thing happens and next thing happens and so on. Now think of Rajesh then and think of me then. Um, who will do my job? that is has not been automated if i move into this role uh, so is my manager going to allow me to then leave what i was supposed to do and do this new thing and that is a realization everybody needs to have about citizen developers everyone can be a citizen developer whoever has to, had to be a citizen developer is a citizen developer but it's not proliferating or it's not uh, exponentially growing from my point of view or being recognized as much um, is because they haven't been taken off their work and, and groomed in a manner for them to become experts at building automations because there's still some job that they have to do. And I think that's so, so that's the challenge, right? And, and therefore, now, if you bring it back to the SMEs and, and uh, medium businesses, right? So, uh, how will they cope with this challenge? Uh, which is where they will, because the same person has to do a lot of things. So, therefore, if I am part of an SMB organization, a smaller medium business, um, where the, the business can't afford to hire a new person because I have found something which is interesting and can automate, but who will do the rest of the work that, I, that is not automated yet? they will not hire someone else. So therefore I am adding extra work to my, my day job 
and that will then demotivate me and i'll say forget this i don't want to work on this anymore and that's where it dies a natural death or if the manager wants to take it forward they'll take it forward and that's where you then bring in the experts who know how to get it done and take it to the next level the automation i mean so i think i think the the concept of citizen developer exists in fact um when we started automation first uh, the people were citizen developers they they had no they these were people who were take, either taking calls or doing some back of house transactions mm-hmm. uh, and and in came blue prism in came ui path free trial versions people started building stuff using workflow diagrams and then obviously as processes had uh, complicated processes had to be automated that's where they started learning a bit more uh, and then suddenly uh, the mainstream uh population of people who have coding background or have software development skills picked up and that's the and those are the people who are doing pretty well uh in the automation space so- I, i think i like that analogy i've never really thought about you know the old um moving directly into that new role and finding a replacement for my role so it's always been it's it's always been you take on more responsibility and i think that's always been the challenge of um the smes um you know having their staff take on more responsibility than usual um and that kind of brings me to another i want to i want to deviate from that you know that angle and i want to talk about you know more things about automation um because it's 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 a ne- i feel like it's the next big thing in terms of e-commerce for digital services um and i really want to talk about you know, some of the automation categories uh, you've come across because i know you i've seen your partnerships um i've seen you know you've partners with both you know service providers you know with you know also these automation platforms as well you know what categories are you seeing a lot of demand for so at this point in time uh, the demand so far in the in the last uh, nine odd months of we being in business uh, we've seen a demand for ui path um, expertise primarily uh, which is a larger chunk um, and then a few bits and pieces here and there uh, with python skills only um, and then of course the the usual blue prism automation anywhere but not as much as ui path uh the other interesting thing uh which the the other thing that that's kind of intriguing rather for me is the is the demand for power automate which i don't see as much it is coming up though uh and the reason why i say that is because i think a couple of weeks ago or something i read an article that said um microsoft's made about 2 billion dollars uh in power automate revenue or something uh and that was like wow um within a couple of years right they they touching 2 billion but the the problem with power power automate is the whole definition and the confusion in the names this power platform this power automate this power automate desktop and then so i think a lot of organizations have not realized the true power of what power automate desktop could do and how it connects to power how is it linked how how are all these things coming up together um to to help build you your um your intelligent automation solutions um i do see a demand for power automate going up but only if um uh the definitions uh are like a kind of cleansed a bit uh, for people to understand what each of those things do what's power platform versus power automate versus power automate desktop so um so yeah our, what we are seeing is uh, we've seen a lot of ui part demand um but uh like i said there are there are a few uh, blue prism automation anywhere uh folks as well and of course python as it's insightful um and what's the next big thing for automato well uh next big thing uh, the next big thing is continue to grow uh, so earlier earlier this week uh we have we've we've got a couple of new clients uh in fact three of them um some have you heard of sap irpa yes right yes yes what not a lot of people know about it um uh sap bought this company called context uh yes before. a while ago yeah four or five years ago uh but there aren't too many people in the world uh they are being de- the 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 solutions being deployed but uh but yeah there aren't enough people if there are they're probably sitting in one one part of the world which is in europe <laughs> or france where but not necessarily spread across um 
so we've got a demand for about six people that uh, that they would like to hire obviously which means uh, they wouldn't disclose for which clients but uh, we've got uh, their end clients so this particular customer has a few end clients where they would need to deploy and continue managing the sap uh, portfolio of automation products uh, like conversational ai analytics cloud and uh, sap irpa uh, then uh, this, I was I was talking Power Automate. Someone needs fifteen people uh, who have Power Automate and Azure skills. So that's another big thing. So, so what's the next big thing? The next big thing is continuing continue doing what we're doing. Keep adding to our customer base. Uh, we've got. Uh, I, I love saying this. I wish I wish I could visually maybe I'll put it on LinkedIn one day. So you've got a client in the US. Uh, we are in Australia. Um, and we've got people from Vietnam and Nigeria working for the U.S. clients. So if I can put a string together like a like a detective, uh, you know, um, then I it it'll be it'll be a lovely visual. Um, and there's a client in Australia uh, who want, uh, who's who's recently hired two people. One of them is from Canada. The other person is from India to work for their Singapore customer um there's obviously then there's the usual two way which is australian customers working with people in india australian customers working in india um and then like i said uh, customers in india um working with people in india so that's what we're doing um uh, so we're growing so that i think growth is the next big thing um in terms of products of course we partner with uh, robocop one of our first partners uh, of products that that I, even I uh, love uh, the team I love talking to. Um, then we have Turbotic, uh, which is a great platform uh, for for organizations that have deployed RPA. How to how to make it more effective, efficient, cost wise, and how do you manage your licenses, etc. So that's another product. Pointy is another one uh, that we work with. So trying to see if we can bring them some business and work with them. Brilliant. Um, we're coming to the end um, of this recording. I really enjoyed um, talking to you today. And then I want people to connect back, you know, you know, back to you as well. You know, how do people reach out to you? Um, well, uh, there's an email address, at, which is info at automator.com. Uh, just drop in an email uh, if you'd like to know more, talk to us. Uh, you know, I'm more than happy to uh, to be on a call with you. We can arrange a call or the usual uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, and yeah, uh, we can we can connect from there and have a conversation. That's the easiest way to reach out. So who is uh, email or LinkedIn? Yes. Um, so we're coming, for everyone watching, we're coming to the end of this. Um, so the video transcription and the video will be available on our website, Um We would also link up, you know, what are relevant links um, on different channels as well. Um, this would also be showing on LinkedIn Live and YouTube on different platforms. So if you want to reach out to an IA consultant um, to discuss anything intelligent automation, um, the market trends, the research, the adversary, and the consulting part of it, uh, we are available. So you can reach out to us on true info at rpjagonbuster.com. Until next time, stay informed.